get out of here. Thank goodness we have more shields on our turrets and main weapons too, or we might have completely lost them. Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundation Summon Old Guy Gaming, and we are going to pick up uh, mostly uh, where we left off, rather, in the last episode. So if you didn't catch the last episode, uh, we went through and got all of the basic mods, ship mods, um, and each one of these, you know, had like a little mini mission uh, to do first. So we went through and got all that finished. I started the advanced chassis mod, uh, but we need some Taladionium, so I sent a ship out to get that, so it's on its way uh, to deliver that. So we'll, we'll uh, continue with the advanced ones, and then we'll also do the exceptional mods as well. Now, my understanding from uh, doing a little bit of research on this is that uh, we're not likely to find a lot of advanced mods, you know, from, from drops, like we have you know, found all the basic stuff. And I think we can only get the exceptional ones from either missions, like doing guild missions, or from killing, I, I guess if we kill buck ships like Prometheus's, they have a chance of dropping some of these, uh, which I have no problem doing because uh, I consider the Buccaneers our enemies anyways. Um, so we'll have to kind of figure out, uh, or I guess I'll have to figure out how serious I want to get about, you know, getting into the advanced and exceptional mods in this particular playthrough. Because here, let's face it, you know, I mean, I could finish out this whole series and be completely victorious, take over the entire universe if I wanted to. With just the vanilla ship. So we don't need to do this. It's just going to make things a little nicer. But I'm not going to, I'm not planning on min-maxing uh, min this or, you know, taking it to its ultimate uh, potential. Uh, we're just going to do it, have a little bit of fun with it, not think too seriously about it. It seems to me like, you know, if we do it, if we did like a pirate playthrough in the future where we're not so much relying upon, you know, a big empire and, and big fleets to back us up, this would be more important. Uh, but for this, we're just going to dip dip our toes into it, have a little bit of fun with it without taking it too seriously because there's a lot to it. I've done a little research on it, and di different people have different opinions on what's best and what isn't, and it's complicated, and it's also very expensive, and there's an RNG element to it. Okay, so uh, one other thing that I, I, I learned, too, is that I originally took my rattlesnake, uh, which is what we're going to mod first, uh, and I, I docked it at my own shipyard, and I went to the workbench here, and there was nothing there. Uh, so I was a little baffled by that, but long story short, you have to be at a shipyard that can manufacture large ships in order for this to work. So, you know, just a little tip there for anybody else that might be new to all of this. Um, it doesn't have to be a shipyard that makes the rattlesnake specifically because we're at a parent shipyard. It just has to be a shipyard that has the ability to manufacture large ships. Um, so learn that. Okay, um, before we actually get started in earnest on the uh, modifications, I also, I basically just brought all of my inventory with me. Um, and we're going to, we're going to make some space fly caviar um, because we can get around a million uh, for selling that. And I was going to, I have some extra parts for extra setas too. Um, and I was gonna make a couple of extra ones of those and sell them because it does indicate that there's a sell price here, but I, I tried that on a previous save and I couldn't sell them, uh, or at least I couldn't sell them to the Paranid. So I don't know if you have to sell them in a specific place or if you can't sell them. Um, so I said, well, screw that, because I didn't know that, right? So I reloaded the game, and what we're going to do instead is we're just going to sell the individual parts. Um, and in doing so, you know, we'll, we'll, we, we, we wouldn't make 1.9 million. Well, actually, would no, we wouldn't. We'll make a lot less money by selling these individual components, but it doesn't do me any good to make the set of devices and not be able to sell it at all. Now, if, if, if it is possible to sell that and I just have to go to a different place, let me know in the comments so I know that, you know, for future reference. Okay, so anyway, we made the space fly caviar, so we'll sell that. Um, now, let's go ahead and jump on into the workbench here and do some modifications of our rattlesnake. So, we're going to start with the chassis mods. And um, 
again, I did a little bit of research, a little bit of reading on some Reddit articles and stuff on this, and it's just, there's a lot to this. And I came to the conclusion that, you know what, I don't want to take this too seriously. I don't want to try and min and max it because it's just, it's too, it's more than I want to take on, okay? So we're going to keep this fairly simple. What I will tell you, though, is that, you know, the honeycomb and the polisher and the buttress, those are the, the three mods that seem to make the most sense uh, for this particular ship anyways. Uh, and then out of, and we can only do one of these. We can't do a polisher and a honeycomb and a buttress. Um, so what I think the, you know, what we're going to get the best bang for our buck is, is probably the polisher, the drag. So what this does is it reduces drag on the ship. And as a result, the ship then becomes faster and more agile. Um, the mass mod, supposedly from what I read, and this may not be accurate. What this mostly does is increase acceleration. So not top-end speed, not um, uh, not agility, but just acceleration. Whereas Polisher, you know, makes increases top-end speed and increases agility, and probably even acceleration by virtue of the fact that there's less drag. So it seems to me like this is really the best one to do. A uh, buttress might be useful for a ship that has a really, really weak hull, which is certainly not the case for the Rattlesnake. The Rattlesnake probably has the most hull out of all destroyer class ships but it does have weak shields but this isn't about shields this is about chassis uh, so all that to say we're going to go with polisher um, so the way this works if you've not seen it is in order to install this i first have to pay fifty thousand credits it's going to cost me one basic ship nano weave and three crystallites and then it does a roll and i have a chance to roll anywhere from minus 4.7 to minus 16.7 percent reduction in the drag and obviously we want the high number okay so let's go ahead and install this and do the roll okay and so we got minus seven so kind of uh, actually that's a terrible roll um, so what we can do is we can re-roll and in doing so i think it reuses the same materials but it's going to cost us another fifty thousand credits um, I don't think it'll consume more of these, but let's watch this. So we currently have 11 and 58 of those. Oh yeah, it did. It it consumed more crystallite, but it did not consume another nano weight. Okay, that's a 9.57. That's also a shitty roll. Let's try it again. 11.42 is a little bit better. Still not super good. Let's try it again. Terrible good very good okay yeah so it looks like it consumed two navidium crystallite each time we did that but it didn't consume the nano weight so or was it three no I, I think it was only two so basically if we look down here now this is the improvement that we get for a, a 16.39 percent reduction in drag so it, it basically increases everything um not a lot but hey you know every little bit counts which is pretty cool Okay, so uh, we're going to stick with that and uh, move on next to uh, weapon modifications. Actually, you know what? Before we do weapons, let's move over to shields first. Because I want to make sure we have enough materials. Now, it each one of these mods may use different materials. I'm not sure about that yet. But... Let's just do shields next, because that's where the rattlesnake needs the most help, is with shields. Okay, so the question now is, do we go with recharge rate or capacity? Um, let's look at bandage. So this could potentially cause the shields to recharge up to 20% faster, which would definitely be useful. Um, the thing about the rattlesnake, though, is and when you, you know, when when you take on a K, for example, once you're in it, depending upon positioning, of course, you're, you're usually in it until one of the other ship dies. So recharge rate's not going to particularly be useful in that scenario. I would not take on an eye in a rattlesnake deliberately. So that, so it's really comes down to a head to head combat with, with a K. Um, and so, I think that buckler is probably going to make more sense, you know, just to have more shields in that scenario. 
And of course we want 20%. Okay, so this is gonna take one basic shield generator coil and one tuning software. Okay, let's do it. Okay, that was a terrible roll, absolutely terrible roll. Um, let's do it again and let's see if it consumes one or more of these. So we got 15 and 64. It doesn't, okay, nice. All right, so at least we, we're not expending components, we're just spending money to try and get a good roll. So let's, let's see if we can get this higher. 6.9 sucks, 5.42 sucks, 13.96 is okay, but I think we can do better. 18.9%. I think we're going to go with that. I don't, if I had billions of cash in my wallet, I, you know, I'd keep going, but I don't. <laughs> I, only have, I only have less than 100 million in my wallet right now, so I think we're going to go with this. We can always, you know, change it up later too so that's not bad 18.09 percent increase in the shields um so that basically shows that we now have a shield uh of 81.981 which is still not a lot but you know this is a rattlesnake so so that improved it a little bit i wonder why it's not showing the green on that though huh, interesting okay so that's what we're going to go with for the main shields um, so this has a medic, a recharge delay. Eh, I still kind of think buckler is what we want to do. But I don't have enough basic shield generator coils to do all of these. So I think if we're going to do this at all... Okay, so that's for engines, and I have had my engines taken out. Let's let's come back to that. I, I wanna if we're gonna do this, I wanna do it on, on the main batteries. And we just don't have enough material to do everything. Um and I still think you know uh, capacity is what we wanna go for. Alright, so we're gonna do this one. Okay, that's decent. I think we're going to probably have to take what we get for these because, again, resources are just so limited. Um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's a little better. Okay, so that gets our, our main batteries improved a little bit. Um, and let's also improve our... Yeah, let's improve our engine shields also with Buckler. That's terrible. We, we got to re-roll that one. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll, we'll stick with that. Okay, so that increases our shields on our engines and our main batteries. Um... If we tried to do the turrets, let's look at that again. I mean, we have, I guess we have enough of these to do the turrets too. Uh, so let's just do it. But we're gonna, we're gonna take what it gives us unless it's really, really bad, which that is marginally really, really bad. That's really good. That's really, really good. Eh, I'll tell you what, we still have six more of these, so let's do this one one more time. Uh, let's do this one one more time. There we go. And I think it was this one that was pretty lame too. That was eight. That was 17. That was 19. Yeah, I think it was this one here. Um, let's see. So we can, yeah, let's re-roll this. I guess this is only costing us money and not parts. So, okay, that was a good roll. Let's let's look at this again. So that's 14, that's 17, that's 17, that's 19, and that's 16. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um I guess we we're okay on money. We have 91 million in the wallet. Why don't we What was this again? 
Let's re-roll this one. It gave us exactly the same thing? That's worse. 12. There we go. 19. Okay, good. Um, Let's re-roll this one. That's good. Okay, 18. Let's re-roll this one. Oh, this is getting expensive. <laughs> 13, 11, 6. Come on, game. You're killing me. We can actually afford this, though. It's just... Oh, for Pete's sake. Seriously? 18. Okay. Good lord, that was bad. Um... Let's re-roll this one. 15. Uh, let's try it again. 16. All right, we're going to stick with 16. Let's re-roll this one. No, it's got to be over 15, let's say. As long as it's over 15, we're, we'll keep it. There we go. Really good roll there. That's 17. 17. 19 and 16. Okay. This one... I think we're going to keep that. It's 18 is pretty good. Okay, so good. I, I think we did good. And yeah, I know. That's a shit ton of money, but we can afford it. Okay, so we've done the chassis and we've done the shields. Uh, let's look at engines next. So the rattlesnake is pretty fast already for a destroyer. Um, 279, and the travel speed is 3352. And we've already improved that somewhat by, by the chassis mod. So, Reaver, hey, look, there's one called Reaver. How about that? What does this do? Travel mode thrust. So, so this increases travel mode and has another property, which could be good or bad. The thing is, though, is these are going to require fuel injectors, and we don't have... We only have five fuel injectors. Um, okay, so that's travel mode. What's this? That allows us to boost for longer. All right. Afterburner. Travel start thrust mod. So I guess that shortens the time for it to wind up. Travel attack time mod. I'm not sure what the difference between thrust, start thrust, and, and attack mod. Unless that has to do with thrusting first before you start it. Minute man is a boost thrust. Travel release time mod. So this is a negative, which means you stop faster? Out of travel mode, maybe? The rattlesnake already stops super fast out of travel mode. Nudge your forward thrust mod. Now, this seems to me like this might be the one we want. Uh, rotational thrust would be useful. That would help with maneuverability. Sidewinder is strafe, okay? This is travel, forward thrust, strafe, rotation. Hmm. So... This is kind of a hard decision. Do I want the ship to be a little bit faster? Or do I want it to be a little more maneuverable? I am almost thinking maneuverability. I really am. So that's probably going to be... Twister. That's good. Well, th okay, so that's going to help with yaw and pitch, whereas Sidewinder is going to help with strafe. Hmm. Yawn Pitch is going to help us, you know, bring our, our guns to bear more quickly. Strafe is going to help us dodge Graviton Fire a little bit better. I think Strafe is what I want to go for here. I'm just kind of thinking through my head... My past encounters in the Rattlesnake, I do try to strafe away from the Gravitons, and sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. 
So being able to strafe more quickly, I think, is going to be the most useful thing to do here. I mean, they're, you know, between forward thrust, strafe, and rotation, all three of those are really good in my mind for this ship. It's just which one is going to be the goodest <laughs> out of all of them. Um, so we're going to go with strafe. So we have Crab Sidewinder. Let's travel forward rotation. It looks like those are our two options. This gives one more property. So the way that this works. I have come to the end of my research. Oh, nice. Okay, so we just got here. Let's actually back out of this for a second. So let's do advanced engine mod next. This will allow you to construct much improved equipment modifications. Okay, so we're just going to have to ferry 50 advanced electronics up to. If you could, please gather the required materials. Up to the headquarters, which is easy peasy lemon squeezy. I got thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of advanced electronics. We just got to get them up there. Um, so let's go here. We'll grab one of these cormorants that isn't doing anything else. Okay, so you are already in reverse fortune. Um, so just go grab from the building supplies depot, advanced electronics. I think you said he just needed 50. Let's bring some extra though in case we need them for other stuff. So we'll just bring a full load back. And then you go back to here, transfer wares. Okay, and then that should get that research going for us. Back to this. So let's see, we're, we're working on strafing. Okay, so Polisher can give us up to 16.7% strafe. Uh, Whereas crab, where's crab at? Wait a second. Oh, I was on the wrong thing. Uh, okay, so crab. Oh, okay, so polisher or sidewinder rather can give us up to 45% more strafe, but we get an extra property, and that extra pro property is usually a negative. Um, let's just try and see what, what, what it is, because it might not be a bad negative, or it might not be a negative we care about. Okay. 40% extra strafe, but our yaw and pitch is cut by 28%. I don't, mm, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> um... Let's see if it's consuming more of these. So we have 4, 53, 61. Yeah, so it seems like it doesn't consume the main, I guess what you call the main ingredient, but it reconsumes the less ingredients. Um, okay, let's try this a couple more times. 36 but 29 42 but 25 I mean that's hmm 44 29 35 29 I I don't think this number is gonna is this number ever gonna drop below 20 and even if it does I don't know if I want to give up 20 percent yaw and pitch I just don't think I want to do that all right, you know what? We're not going to do this. Let's dismantle it. We'll get our parts back, or at least some of them. And we're just going to go with crab. Oh, look at that. Nice. We got almost 20% on the first roll. We'll take it. Yeah, because again, I just don't, I don't want to give up that much maneuverability just so we can stray faster. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that takes care of our engine modification. Um, now we have weapon and turret mods. Can we? What's Kilroy? I don't even know where I got a Kilroy paint mod. Um, I can't say that I like it though. <laughs> it's kind of a baby blue. I think I'd rather go to our, our default blue. Okay, so 
So yeah, there you go. Um, let's do weapons next. Okay, so the main batteries. What are our options here? We got cooling mods. We got rotation mods. Damage mods. Projectile lifetime mod, which is I'm assuming is range. Surface element damage mod. Hmm. Okay, let's think about the guns on the Rattlesnake. The Rattlesnake does probably the most damage of any destroyer in this game. Because it's got four main batteries. And they're just devastating. But it has a fairly long cooldown. So if we could get the guns to cool down more quickly... I would think that would that will translate to you know more damage over time. So I'm thinking cooling is probably makes the most sense for the rattlesnake. Um, slasher. Oh my goodness! Can you imagine increasing the damage on these guns by 50 percent? But this is going to have two properties though, and they could be two negative properties. Um, and that, if it's a property that affects, like, say, cooling, I don't know, hmm, I don't know if that'd be worth it. A reload mod. Does this apply here, or is this only for missiles? Or maybe, you know, um, the weapon fires in bursts, and then it takes a second before the next burst. I wonder if this decreases the time in between bursts. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Projectile speed, I mean, yeah, useful, but not gimbal, eh, not necessarily stabber. This is a damage mod. This would add an extra property and can be up to 45% more damage. I mean, on the other side of the coin, if we're doing 45% more damage without increasing the cooldown, we're still doing more damage over time. 45% <laughs> more damage, can you imagine on this ship? This has a ne potential negative property though the other damage is piercer this has no negative property uh, but it's only up to 20 percent I'm curious to see what this actually might do what does mistral do that cools down up to 52 percent but has two potential negatives so I'm not interested in mistral what is gregale that can be 49 percent with potentially one negative Hmm. We have 10 basic weapon chambers. See, this is it's really hard to decide what to do. There's so many options, and some of the options, you know, it's not like there's one good option and 10 bad ones. Some of them are like four good options. And so, you know, which one do you take kind of thing? 45% more damage. You know what? Let's let's do this and just see what happens. Yeah, see. I don't know though. <laughs> Last order could not be completed. Hmm, I don't know. So Okay, let's think this through. If every shot connects, we're gonna do forty-four point three five percent more damage. Than we than the, the normal weapons, but it's going to take almost thirty percent longer for them to be ready again. That is a fair trade-off if every shot connects. But sometimes, you know, sometimes a shot misses, and then, you know, then the then there's like diminishing returns here. See, this is almost the absolute, this is so close to 45%. It is so tempting. Um, oh boy, ah, I don't know. That is such a good roll for this number here. I'll tell you what.
So that's Stabber, right? Piercer's just plain straight up damage, but only up to 20%. Gregale can cool down to 49%, but it's going to give us something bad. Oh. Oh, right. We can't install this in unless we dismantle this one. Boy, I don't know what to do, you guys. <laughs> See, you know what I think is going to happen here? I think Regale is going to give us cooldown, but it's going to reduce our damage. It's going to do just the opposite of this. And so in the case of some of the initial shots missing, this is going to pay off better. But in the case of all of the shots connecting, which most of the time they do, this is going to be better. I think we're going to stick with, dam uh, with Stabber. I think we're going to stick with Stabber. Um, yep, that's what we're going to do. Okay, I've made up my mind. And because we've made that decision, we're going to do Stabber on all of them. Unless we wanted two of them to cool down more quickly. We could do a mix-up of the two. Nah, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to do Stabber for everything. Okay, let's see what we get on this one. 35% and 31%. Um, let's stay with that for now. Very good. We're going to keep that one. And let's try this last one. Pretty good. It's only 35, but this is 26% cooldown. Um... Okay, so let's go back to, we're going to keep that one for sure. Let's re-roll this one, and it should not use a basic weapon chamber, but it should use another one of these. 3731. And let's see if we can get this up to 40. There we go. 43, we'll take it. Um, like, oh man, that is so damn close to 40, but it's also above 30 here. Let's re-roll this one. 35, 41, 30. We're going to keep it. And then lastly, we'll redo this one. This one is so good on the, on the cooling roll, but let's just do it again. Ooh, very good. Very, very, very good. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So there you go. We got the main batteries, um, upgraded. They're going to, they're going to do a hell of a lot more damage. Um, take a little longer to cool down, but we just have to make sure that all of our shots connect if we want maximum efficiency. All right, now it's time for turrets. So we have uh, the four plasma turrets. Those are exclusively used for capital vessels and stations. So it seems to me like probably we just want these suckers to do as much damage as possible. Um, so it looks like we have the same options. Cooldown doesn't matter for turrets. So Stabber makes the most sense. We're going to get a negative cooldown, but who cares? Right? So let's see if we can get each one of these plasma turrets up into the 40s. There we go. 43. That's funny that they have weapon cooling on turrets because it, it's absolutely irrelevant. Okay, good. Yeah, we'll take 43% more damage and change on our first plasma turret. Let's go with Stabber here. 44%, nice. 41%, we'll take it. And finally... Okay, let's re-roll this one. 37, 38, 44, we'll take it. Whew, man, those turrets are going to pack a mean punch. Okay, now we have beam turrets. We have two beam turrets and two flak turrets on this ship. Beam turrets... Um, beam length mod. Interesting. So they go up further. Projectile speed doesn't matter on a beam. Rotation speed 
I mean, I don't know. Cooling damage projectile lifetime. So the beam lasts longer. Hmm. So the beam can last up to 20% longer. Is that better or should we just <clears throat> have it do more damage? I, again, knowing that cool, cool down doesn't matter. So 20% longer or 45 I think damage makes the most sense. I really do. Um, we could make the beam longer by how much? Only 10%. Nah, that doesn't seem useful. Slasher can give us up to 50%. I wonder what the negatives would be on this. You know, come to think of it, I think we should have looked at that for the plasma turrets too. I only have two basic weapon chambers left though. Oh, you know what? Since we only have two of those left, I think I'd rather modify the flak turrets. I'm glad I looked at that. Okay. So let's think about flak turrets. We have Argon flak turrets, which already have the fastest tracking of all turrets, uh, you know, that are available. So we don't really need to worry about tracking. We don't need to worry about cooldown. Projectile speed could be useful for flak turret. And of course, damage too. And projectile lifetime, which again, I think that means range. Oh, he's done already. All right, let's get the next research started. We'll come back to this. So we're on the flak turrets. Advanced shield mod. This will allow you to construct much improved equipment modifications. Okay, so we need to bring some plasma conductors up. If you could, please gather the required materials. Um, can a cormorant take 250 plasma conductors? Okay, so we'll go to building supplies, transfer wares. We can take 246, but we already had three, so that's still not enough. Um, you know what, though? Here, let's just, we'll send two cormorants up there. Transfer wares. Plasma conductors. Oh, never mind. That gets us uh, 252. That's good enough. Okay. So we'll get going on that research. Back to this. Okay, so we're working on flak turrets. All right. Now, projectile speed. By how much? 10%. Mm, that's the only projectile speed mod. Projectile lifetime, again, does that mean that's, that old, that's got to mean, well, it means one of two things. It means it either fires for longer or it goes further. And I think it means it goes further. So this is really a range thing, which could be useful. Uh... I'm, I don't know. I'm still just favoring damage, to be honest with you, on this. I like the idea of faster speed, but, but only 10%. That's not enough, I think, to make it better than in just flat out increasing the damage of these suckers. And we know it's going to have a cooldown, uh, negative cooldown, which absolutely doesn't matter. So it seems to me like stabber is what we want to do. Okay, so let's do a roll. And we'll take 42%. That's good enough. Okay. Let's go with the other flak turret. We only have one wimp weapon chamber thing in Madoodle left, but we can reuse that if we don't get a good roll. Let's do it. Let's try and get this at at least 40. Oh, that's so damn close, but let's try it again. 43. There we go. And that's it. Uh, we can't do any more... Um, mods 
because we're missing basic weapon chambers. And I think all of these, yeah, all of these require basic weapon chambers. Okay. So, I'm feeling pretty good about this overall, guys. Um, let's, let's just quickly review. So, for the chassis mod, we got it up to 16.39%. Or uh, the polisher mod in particular, uh, which increased all of these values, every single one of them. Um, for the weapon modifications, we increased the damage of all of our main batteries by 40, at least 40% or higher, but with uh, the negative effect of a longer cooldown. But we decided that that's going to be fine as long as we make sure that all of our shots connect the, um, as best as we can. So 43%. 41% and 44%. Man, this thing is just going to be a beast. Uh, turret modifications. We increase the damage on our plasma turrets, each one of them by at least 40%. Um, so, yeah, that's 43%, 44%, 41%, and 44%. Uh, we weren't able to do the beam turrets because we didn't have enough of those uh, basic weapon chambers, but we increased our flak turret damage by 42% and 43%. We increased our large shield by 18.9%. We just went with the capacity on that. And we also did the, we did the buckler on everything, right? Yeah. We increased the engine uh, shield generator by 19%. And then each one of these shield generators for the turrets by... I think we said we ha we wanted to go at least above 15%, and it looks like every one of them are. Yeah, okay. And then um, engine modification, we went with the crab, which increased our strafe by 19% without affecting our rotation, our yaw, and our pitch. I like it. I think we've done some significant improvements overall on this rattlesnake. It'll be interesting to take it out and see how it fares in our next battle. All right, you guys. Um, that's it. It took the whole damn episode <laughs> for us to go through uh, and do all these modifications, but I think we have a vastly improved ship. And, that, and the cool thing about this, too, is, you know, that's just the basic modifications. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Like I said, the jury's out on whether or not I'm going to bother too much with trying to do the enhanced and the advanced or whatever it just depends upon how big of a pain in the butt it's going to be for us to get the parts but i have no problem whatsoever going out and blowing up buck chips to get those high-end modifications um and we'll just kind of see how that plays out but i'm definitely going to be more diligent moving forward in collecting drops from ships because i i've kind of you know done it a little bit here and there but we, you know, in order for us, because I'm going to want to do this, you know, with with the uh, Raptor and probably with the Osakas and later on, you know, once we eventually get it, the, the Asgard and so forth. So we really need to start collecting drops as they happen. Okay, guys, let's take the Rattlesnake out for a quick spin. Um, Hello. We won't really be able to test all of the changes unless we get into a scrap with something. Um, but let's just see, at least in terms of flying how it feels. So we didn't change... Well, no, we did. We did change yaw, pitch, roll, all that by virtue of the fact that we have a lighter chassis. So it's... Uh, it, I can tell. I mean, you know, 16%-ish is enough to tell a, a small difference. Not a, not a huge difference. But yeah, it seems just a tiny bit more responsive. But it's the strafing that we improved significantly. So... Let's do this. Let's stop. And we're just gonna... We're gonna point at the... Uh, the large ship hangar, and let's just strafe to port side. So remember, this was like a 40-some-odd percent increase in strafe. It, it's kind of hard to, to really tell without incoming fire or something, but... Yeah, but hopefully that will... It's got to make a difference. I mean, 40%-ish increase has to make a difference. Um, now, let's let's just kind of get a feel for the cooldown. He 
got to remember, though, each one of those bolts is doing over 40% more damage than it used to. But, you know, obviously the cooldown's taking, on the average, about 30% longer. But, you know, we rolled this so that each damage did over 40. So let's say it averages 42% damage across the, all four of them, just to pull a number out of a hat. Um, so we're doing 42% more damage, even though we're waiting 30% longer-ish for everything to cool down. So I think that's a good trade-off, Ian. We just have to make sure, if we want to maximize this, we just have to make sure that we hit, uh, that every shot hits. So we're not wasting wasting that. Um, I don't think there's really anything else we can test without being in combat. Okay, guys, I got to thinking about something. Um, since this is our personal combat ship, I should be splurging and putting the Mark III thruster on here. And it looks like the mods that we applied that gave us the uh, increase in strafe is not attached to the thruster, which is very odd. Um, but also good because that means we can change out to the Mark III without losing the modification. Uh, because if you look here, you'll notice that our engine has like this little chevron now. It says there's a modification installed. Um, and likewise for our shields. But the thrust mod, uh, I'm sorry, the strafe mod, which should be applied to this. I don't know why it isn't. Apparently isn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to splurge and we're going to spend... Uh, five million more because you know I wouldn't do this for all of our rattlesnakes, uh, but well, maybe if we're making them ourselves, I would. But uh, for now, it's you know it's gonna well, it's only gonna cost us about four ish million more to do this. But then we're gonna get even more increase in maneuverability. Um, so we're gonna do that right now. And something else I got to thinking about is that um, I have. I have some scouts that are just kind of sitting around at the moment, not really doing a whole lot of anything. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these, I'm going to assign these scouts to each of our um, defense platforms and have them go collect drops for us. And I might even be able to accomplish this with repeat orders, perhaps. So family crit is the one that's furthest north. So what we're going to do with scout one is we're going to change it. It's station two family crit. So that's where it will dock by default. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, we can't do it that way. Because because repeat orders is a default behavior. Okay, so um, let's try this again then. So let's go back to here. We're going to grab the scout. We're going to set it on default or repeat orders rather okay now what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to dock at family crit i still have it selected right yeah okay then we're going to tell it to Um, still selected, right? Yeah. We're going to tell it to collect drops. And that's all we should need to do. So what it'll do is it'll go collect drops. When it's done collecting drops, it'll dock at the station. And I don't know if the, if, if the algorithm will have it wait until there's new drops or if it'll just 
go out and look for him, and then if it doesn't find him, redock, and then et cetera, et cetera. We'll, we'll have to kind of keep an eye on it, see how that works. But that gives me a, a good use for these scouts that have kind of just been sitting around, because, I mean, I don't need to explore anything anymore. I don't need to update any more orders. So I haven't really had anything for them to do. Um, so this will give them something to do. And the size of the ship doesn't matter in, in terms of inventory items, as far as I'm aware, because it goes into the pilot's inventory, not into the ship. Um, they will, you know, they they will run a risk, of course, of getting blown up if they go out during combat, but we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Okay, so let's do the same thing now with Scout 2 at Family Zen. You know what we could do, actually? We could give them a third order to drop off their inventory. Um, I'm not going to think about that for a second. The problem with that is that let's say they pick up, like, there's only three drops. They pick them up, and then they travel halfway across the universe to the headquarters to drop them off. In the meantime, there's a big battle. There's, like, 30 drops, but by the time the ship gets back, they're, they've, they've already disappeared. On the plus side, we reduce the risk of the pilot getting killed before it has a chance to drop off its inventory. I mean, it still could get killed in spite of that. Um, maybe the other thing we should do with these guys is make sure... Yeah, make sure that they're on flea commands. So if they do happen to go out when there's enemies around, they try and get away. That makes sense. And it looks like they all already are. It's just that some of them are on direct. Okay. Yeah, I think... What if... Okay, let's just look at this for a second. If we do... Um, deposit inventory. So that would work... I think, okay, I think I'm going to do this because I want this to be as automated as possible. So we might miss out on some drops, but we increase the chance of getting whatever they do grab back to headquarters. So I think we're, I think I'm going to do this. Um, okay, why is this grayed out again? If we look at the crew, see this one has inventory. Uh, I bet you that's what it is. Okay. Um, okay, now he does have inventory. Okay, now can I tell it to, or tell him to, yeah, deposit inventory. Okay, that's, that's what it was. Okay. Um, but, you know, after it deposits its inventory, hopefully it'll still, the repeat command will still stick around. We'll have to, I guess I'll have to watch that too. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Okay, you don't have an inventory yet. You don't yet, and you don't yet. So I'll have to come back and apply the command once these guys have something in their inventory. Whew, okay, we figured that one out. <laughs> oh, this game, man, I'll tell you what, there's so much to it. So much to it. Um. So now what I'm going to do is... We're, this episode's going to go long. There's just no two ways about it, but... I want to see if we can demonstrate uh, the rattlesnake in action with the mods. You know, I don't remember ever seeing anything that increased the range. Oh yeah, we've got improved. That's right, we have an improved um, plasmas too. I have a feeling we're gonna just burn this guy to the ground. Okay, here we go. Kind of lead the shot a little bit, so. Okay, so by the time our main guns stopped firing, we, his shields were already gone. Look at this. Yeah, this ship is definitely more powerful than it used to be. We can even squeeze off a few more of these. Explosion imminent. Okay. Danger. Now. Let's just uh, 
see if we can get a feel for our turrets. They're not going to be any faster, but they're they're going to do a lot more damage. The flak turrets, in particular. Yeah, I'd say I'd say we took that K out <laughs> a little faster than we used to be able to. Um, we never really got to test the shields on him, though, but, I mean, we know they're improved, right? So, I think we're to be fairly confident that they're doing their thing. I might even s switch out the beam turrets. I mean, I don't know that they do a whole lot of good. Awaiting orders. I know they have, you know, a guaranteed hit, but they don't do very much damage. So I might get rid of those and put um, two more flax and get those modded too as soon as we have the Awaiting resources orders. to do it. But yeah. Yeah, we, we took that K out like just absolutely butchered him. Um, all right, let's see what is going on. We got a little bit of fighter action here. I just don't want them to go after that to station is all. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay, so we've got a K, uh, the K and the I are currently on the Asgard in this K. All right, so that Osaka is still alive. We might be able to sneak up on this K and take it out. We're going to have to be really careful, though, because I don't really want to take the eye on unless we well you know unless we decide to send our fighters in to take its engines out which we could do but we already know that works uh, but let's see if we can get this other k without Awaiting getting orders. too close to the eye awaiting orders burn this guy down Waiting. Gotta hurry because the case and the eye is actually coming towards us. Fortunately, we're above the eye though, so he can still hit us, but not with all of his guns. Awaiting orders. Awaiting orders. Hitting us already. Oh, shoot, we missed on a couple shots there. Goodness, we have more shields on our turrets and main weapons too, or we might have completely lost them. Okay, time to go. Okay, yeah, I can uh, I can definitively say that this rattlesnake <laughs> it's improved um, for sure. Uh, with a noticeable difference. It's not a huge difference, but it's noticeable enough. Noticeable enough. Okay, well, I think we've accomplished what we needed to accomplish here. Um, so I'm already have a guidance outside the gate. So I think what we're going to do is wrap up the episode here. And... Uh, not sure exactly what we'll do in the next episode, but we will figure it out. We always do. We'll go from there. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and share out the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Lost another she. Dang it. These guys are attacking my engines. If they take my engines out, I could be in trouble. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Put it this way, if it does happen, I'll show it on video. Otherwise, bye. Yes, I made it out. No, I didn't have to reload. We actually made it out. Just in case you were curious. Awaiting orders. Ah! Entering Argus Cafe, 15 minutes.